Thanks. Oh, man, too late. We're already live. Hey, Damon, happy Monday, my friend. How, do I even need to ask how was your weekend? Do I even need to ask? No, Kurt, you don't. And it why do I not need to ask? The Mariners are in the playoffs. The Seattle Mariners won the first round of the playoffs. So, hey, yeah. I am just so excited for you. Congratulations. First time in what, 20, 21 years? 21 years. Oh, my son God. reminds me he was two years old the last time we went to it. He was two the last time Seattle Mariners won a yeah. playoff series. So Damon has a super exciting week. So guys, happy Monday to everybody. Welcome to Manufacturing Monday Motivation. What an absolute honor and thrill. Hope you had a dynamic, incredible, wonderful, fantastic weekend, just like my partner in crime, Damon, just had. So guys, I'm just honored, thrilled, and just blessed to interview to introduce my dear friend, Rebecca. Rebecca, happy Monday. How are you today? Doing great, Kurt. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Oh, man, I've been, this is so long overdue. So, Rebecca, we're going to be digging deep into, you are a fierce advocate for education, adult education, mind you. And so we're going to take a deep dive into like your path, your journey, and why this is so critical. But before we do that, I have a little question for you first. Sure. It's a sports trivia question. In oh, 1984, no. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing, no sports. We're not going to talk sports today. Oh, my just internet's teasing. unstable. I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> just teasing. No, unless it's the Mighty Ducks, we're not going to, unless it's a Mighty Ducks trivia question, we're not going to go there, right? So here's yep. my first question for you today, Rebecca. As a young gal growing up, and if I'm not mistaken, maybe Virginia, are you a Virginia gal? By, Great by memory. Me? All right. So we have a Virginia gal here, and as you were growing up in Virginia, who was your hero growing up? Who was your hero growing up in Virginia? Oh, wow. That's a huge question that I should have prepared for. <laughs> That's the um, whole point. We didn't I, watch I think prepared. my grandmother was a bit of a, ah, a awesome. hero to me. She was, she was really a role model for how to show people you care about them every day. Oh my goodness. Let's, you know, and what's grandma's name? Lillian. Lillian, go a little deeper. Like, what were some examples of how Lillian would just show her her love and and spread that care for folks in your world? Let's go there for a minute. She was always taking food to neighbors who were sick or who had something going on in their lives. She was kind of the person who had all the neighborhood kids over in the background, teach, in the backyard, teaching us about gardening and letting us randomly harvest things we shouldn't have. Um, and she kept me a lot and took me to school. She gave me my first cup of coffee, which I'll always be grateful for, but she was just a really loving community member. Oh, that's awesome. So, hey, shout out to Grandma Lillian and, and for her spreading that love and that care for you. Hey, we've got a couple folks here. We've got our dear friend Val in the house. She's hey, looking Val. for some Monday motivation here. We've got Dana here today from Bellingham, right, right. in your backyard. Dana. Hey, uh, Dana. Yeah. Great to see you. So, we've got, I say, so guys, if you're out there, drop us a note. First off, you absolutely want to connect with Rebecca. She is a dynamo, she's a dear friend. We're just so blessed to have her here today. Drop us a note. Let us know that you're out there and feel free to ask any questions. We're here to talk about adult education and pro-literacy. So now, Rebecca, let's go there for a minute. So growing up in Virginia, you go off to college. And so now you find yourself as an educator. Now, I'd like you're a huge advocate for adult education. Now, if I'm not mistaken, your earlier career it looked like you were you were educating young folks on your on your LinkedIn profile. So it's like two to twelve. How did you start with young folks and how did you kind of, uh, I don't say graduate to, but how did you decide to take your superpowers, your talents to help folks with adult education? It really goes back to where I grew up in Virginia. I'm from a super rural part of Appalachia mm -hmm. and I have a parent who didn't go to high school. Mm -hmm. And that is actually very common for that mm -hmm. generation and in that area. So I, I saw a lot about what the impact of that is on individuals and families. I'm the first person in my family to graduate from college. So very strangely, I ended up teaching English in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, many people moved to the US for better economic opportunities. I moved to Japan and, you know, a bit against my will, they stuck me with some two to 12 year olds. And I, 
I also got to teach adults in the afternoon and I just really felt the passion for teaching adults. Awesome. And hey, and we've got another friend here. We've got Joan dropping a note. Good morning from Northampton, yeah. Massachusetts. Thank so you. I think Joan is North is Smith College near Northampton. I think it might be. So drop me a note in the chat box if that's correct. So all right. So how did you I piqued my curiosity? We were going, I'm going off script a little bit, Rebecca. What brought you to Japan? I like we can't let that one slide. Yeah. How did you go from rural Virginia to Japan? You know, it was just one of those things where I, I felt it was meant to be. Nice. So I went for it. I knew nothing. I knew no yeah. Japanese. I know what it's like to move to another country where you are functionally illiterate for a better economic opportunity. Washed my hair with toilet cleaner, got lost a lot. You know, the normal stuff. Oh, that well, is... Go yeah. ahead, because Because that is truly... You experienced what it's like people immigrating to the to the U.S. coming to the U.S. for for a better opportunity that, that where English is a second language and and that is uh, and Japanese and this is not an easy language to learn. Yeah, it is not. Yeah, yeah. And so I have to I have to ask: Were you surprised at the the at the size of living space that people have in Japan? I was prepared for that, thanks okay. to our friend Google, but I wasn't really prepared for what the appliance situation was like. Most places don't have an oven. You have this kind of tiny little grill door, very unprepared for that. I also didn't realize that my toilet was going to be in my shower, so that was <laughs> another surprise. <laughs> wow. Well, well, we can talk about that offline, so how about a couple, couple questions here is, uh, hey, Trisha. Trisha's in the house. She is an what a dynamo yeah. Trisha is. Big leap awesome. of faith talking about moving to Japan. And we've got Ellen, Dr. Ellen here. Good morning from Maryland. And Damon, I want to, why this is such an, uh, this really is close to our heart. I want to come back to Joan here. I asked if she uh, is near Smith College. It is. So my hero, my mother, uh, and Damon, you're in the same boat. Both of our mothers later in life raised their children and went back to uh, college. Yeah. My mother went to Smith College right in your backyard. Joan, uh, you know, after raising her children, went off to get her master's degree at Pitt. I know, Damon, your mother went off to get her PhD later yeah. in life, right? Yeah. Yep. And so, you know, so again, as you know, I, so for both, you know, Damon and I worship our moms and just love what the message that you're spreading, uh, Rebecca. So let's dig into this. Okay, so now you go from Japan and you, you said like kicking and screaming and two to 12 year olds, but you really resonated on that adult education. So you come back to the States. Can you take us through that walk of life, your career and like how you've become such a fierce advocate for adult education? Sure. When I came back, I went to graduate school in Vermont because I knew that I wanted to teach adults and I needed some further education to be doing that in the U.S. Uh, Joan was actually one of my classmates. So oh, nice. when I was there on campus, I found myself to be one of the only first generation college students who was born in the US who was in my program. There were very few of us and it solidified to me a bit what access to education can really mean for people and the trajectory of their lives. And from there, I became very passionate about helping people access it. I went through roles, I moved first to Atlanta and worked in some community-based organizations, helping people transition out of English language and adult basic ed into jobs, and also to transition into college programs or career and technical ed from those basic courses. And I just loved it. Every year, I love it more. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's fantastic. So now I'm going to take a little sidestep here. So Rebecca, you and I met this past year. We both joined a group through Dory Clark and what a dynamo powerhouse Dory Clark is, Damon. We had the honor and privilege of yeah. interviewing Dory on our show uh, over Incredible. the summer. And so Dory has a community called Recognized Experts. And so Rebecca and I joined this group. We're part of this little mastermind where we get together. It's just a, just a delightful, incredible, high level group. They are motivational, inspirational. They're our accountability partners, Rebecca. So let's talk about what the uh, what Dory Clark and like this group, that community has been, meant to you. And then I want to slide into like, you do such a great job of helping folks with community, but what's that Dory Clark community done and meant to you? So many things. I absolutely love that community. It's been one of the best things I've done for myself. 
I initially joined it because not a lot of people know about what we do in adult education. And even within our little mastermind group, I was sort of a new topic for a lot of folks in yeah, the yeah. group. So it has really helped me to learn to tell the story in a way that connects more with people outside of our field. Oh, that's fantastic. And I'll tell you, it's just, it's, it's great. I, the, you talk about the rising tide, you know, with lifts off ships. This group is just so dynamic. These are authors, they are awesome. speakers, TED Talk. Damon, we've had numerous folks. Yes. Uh, Maria, uh, she came on and did her TED Talk about uh, being in the roller derby. Remember that? Yes. One? That, was oh, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. But so, all right, Rebecca, let's get into your superpowers. You are a learning Sherpa as you tag yourself, you know, pro literacy. You're, awesome. the, you're the adult education consultant at New Readers Press. Talk about what you're doing now. And, the, and I know you're doing some exciting things. You're out Damon's Way in August. You're out in Washington. So let's go there now. Like, what's what are your superpowers? What's your excitement going on today where you're spreading literacy for adults? So I have several things going on in that realm. All of us in this uh, field wear many hats. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of agreement with that in the chat. But one of the things I've been doing for the last year is that I'm a fellow, a student adult education advocacy fellow with COABE, which is our national organization that unites us all. It's the Coalition on Adult Basic Education. Mm -hmm. So through that role, I have gotten to speak with a lot of legislators in all over my state. I'm in Illinois, so we have a really diverse range of things here yeah. from like urban manufacturing to big scale agriculture. And I get to hear from the legislators about what's going on in their communities and to also talk with them about how adult ed might be an asset. That's something that I've loved uh, with New Readers Press. I get to travel around through five states and talk with fellow educators about what's going on in their programs, what they need, um, what training might be useful for the educators that they work with. And I also teach at a community college because I don't like to be bored. So I'm teaching the learners that I'm advocating for and also learning from them. That's awesome. So now I'm traveling and somebody outside is like, I think weed whacking. They don't realize that it's money manufacturing, money motivation going on right now. So I might have to go out there and say, hey, guys, do you not understand it's manufacturing, money motivation? You can't be doing they, that. They should. Show. They should. Hey. They're not watching. I can't hey. believe it. What's wrong with you guys? So, all right, we'll get back to the pro. So I might be muted myself here and there. So, Rebecca, so let's take it further. So I know, like, you were out in Washington, you know, like, explain, you know, talk about the things that you're doing for COAB and you know, the community college, New Readers Press. Let's talk about some of the solutions that you're providing to communities that you're bridging together. Let's take a deep dive there. So one of the starting points for me has been to help people realize what adult basic education is. Yeah. It's not a thing that is part of most people's everyday vocabulary. We offer education in kind of what you think of as traditional adult basic ed, which would be reading, writing, and math. We also help people who might not have a high school equivalency to complete the GED or high set. We provide English language for non-native speakers and also citizenship classes for people who are in that pathway. But some of the things that are really important to the community here is that we provide training in digital literacy. Even many of our young folks who we tend to fill our digital natives use technology really differently than what might be needed in a manufacturing plant or yeah. what's needed if you want to write business emails, submit a resume. We also talk about financial literacy. Um, another member of our group, Robin, talks about building financial literacy with kids. And we have some great conversations because I'm looking at that from the adult side. How do you read your pay stub? How do you know how much money you should be saving? How do you pay your bills on time and not get an additional fee? And we also talk about health literacy which is huge on the impact of absenteeism in employment. So we educate people on all kinds of topics related to health literacy. And I go around and spread that joy to people. 
Wow. So, so let's talk about this. Let's, you know, so when you think adult education, so you're, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, you know, kind of the basics, you know, and that's right in the name of co-ed. You know, I don't know if I want to say dispel a myth, but, you know, you know, as Americans, we take a lot of pride and like, you know, you know, Rebecca, can you go in that, like, not to like rattle off literacy rates per se, but how, you know, I know like when you get underneath the hood, like you're seeing how big of a demand there is for what you're what you and your team and everybody is so passionate about doing. Can you talk a little bit about um, anything like Damon was asking, like, was it shocking about how small, you know, the Japanese apartments were, what have you, you know, is there anything shocking for those of us that are not in your field that we should be, you know, aware of, of the literacy rates or like why this is so critical for our country? Absolutely. These stats are shocking. They were shocking to me. We have about one in five adults in the US struggles to read a basic sentence. And this impacts everything from traffic signs on the highway to prescription labels on medicine. So that impacts a lot of other people even around those folks. It's really a community problem, not an individual problem. We also have shockingly low numeracy skills, only about one uh, one in every three adults in the U.S. has low numeracy skills, which means those basic foundational math topics like add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And that's super important because it helps people tell time, like how to be on time for work. I have students who keep the TV on all the time at home because they know that when a certain program comes on, it's time to go get the bus. Um, very things you wouldn't think of like that, measuring ingredients in a yeah. recipe, um, reading a train schedule, just so many things are impacted by that. Yeah. I, wow. That's, well, that's incredible. Cause you think about that and you're going to double a recipe and it's got, you know, whatever, <laughs> two thirds of a cup and you well, got to double that. What's it, it? What is it? Yeah. And so, you know what, and with, let's, let's take that even further. So Rebecca, as you know, you've been a dear friend. I love when you pop in our show and you drop comments. Thank you for all your support. Your, it means the world to yeah. both Damon and myself. As you know, you know, we're, our song that we sing, we don't sing, even though we might do karaoke someday here. We'll have Rebecca on for that one, Damon. But okay. don't tempt me. Like, with the song that we like to sing are to manufacturers and just think about how important this is. So I've been, you know, in manufacturers where like, you know, uh, somebody comes in, you know, a temp or somebody's on the shop floor and now they're handed a drawing. And now, like, they don't want to feel like a fool. Nobody wants to feel like a fool. And now they just can't read that drawing or they can't uh, measure. Uh, they can't use a ruler. They can't use a yardstick. They can't do basic measurement. So, again, you know, it's 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 unfortunate, but it, we are so blessed to have folks like you to help tackle these things. So why should this be, why is this so important? You know, I'm being a little Captain Obvious here. Why is this so critical for entre entrepreneurs, manufacturers, business owners to really uh, take an ownership and be part of this process of really helping this pro-literacy, you know, getting our country top notch? Great question. Three really important topics fall under that. One of them is workforce development. So if we think about the latest jobs report that came out, there were over 10 million unfilled jobs as of August yeah. 31st of this year. We're not graduating um, new graduates fast enough to fill those openings, but we do have 22 million adults in the U.S. who have less than a high school diploma. And we also have about 7 million of that population don't speak English fluently. But these are very motivated, skilled people. Yeah. Just think about yeah. how resilient you have to be to know what time to get a bus by watching your TV. That is clever to figure out. So these people are a real asset. And one of the things that's surprising maybe to the folks here is that typically when a person enrolls in a program to get a high school equivalency, with that stated goal, they usually finish in about a year. So we're not talking about an extremely long process. Yeah. So I got a kind of follow up question to this. If, if I'm a business leader and I'm listening to this today and I know I have people in my workforce that may be working on my factory floor, maybe working anywhere in my business or in the community, how do I, as that business leader, develop 
are there programs that I can just have people in my business? We set up, hey, we're going to do math literacy training. We're going to do, if you don't have your GED, we're putting it on. We got it in the in the conference room on, you know, Tuesday at noon or whatever the heck it is. Are there programs like that? Because I think as Kurt said, and you said, there, there's this, there's this demand in manufacturing for skilled people or to, to help them become better uh, because it helps us all as we do this. I think that leaders kind of get caught up in, well, how, how, how can I, how can I help? How can I help my people? How can I help my community? So are there programs that, that they can tap into? Yeah, this is easier than you might think. So there is money from the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act called WIOA that goes out uh, through the states. It's dispersed in various ways. Much of it ends up in community or technical colleges that house these programs. So if you if you want to start by finding out what's already around you, I think I've given Kurt a link he can drop in the chat, but we have a locator tool through CoAPE where you can find the program that's closest to you. Okay. Uh, another thing that you can consider is that many programs now provide IET, which is Integrated Education and Training. So all of these folks get the, the basic education, adult education that we talked about. They also get workforce skills. So these are your soft skills, how to talk with your boss when you need to be absent, how to manage a conflict with a coworker, what to, how to manage your emotions if you're angry at work or stressed about a problem at home. And they get career specific training. So if you want your folks to drive a forklift or do CNC machining, there are tracks for that. And if one doesn't exist, frequently a business can work with a local college to create one. But as Damon mentioned, many of our workers may have multiple jobs. They might work swing shifts or odd hours. There may be only one car in the family. Yeah. You can certainly create a program on site. We yep. have some great options for that. And you would contact someone like me to help you with that. Okay. And I think Ellen makes another great point here in the comments, Kurt, you know, minimum qualifications. We really have to go back and look because there's a lot of positions, people have four year college degree or blah, 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 blah. Is that do you really need that or do you just need good experience in these positions? Because I think that we, we don't want to rule people out just because they don't have the specific education when they do have the experience to do things. Yeah, that was a fantastic comment there, Ellen. Again, thank you for joining us today. Deeply appreciate you dropping that comment. I want to go back to a couple comments real quick and then come back. Again, our dear friend Trish Stewart's here today. She's been a guest on the program. She's a dynamo. She there said, reach out to my cousin, state uh, state rep Katie Stewart. She's a former right. math teacher, and she's in Illinois State. So, again, uh, Trish, you need to connect with Rebecca here. You guys, uh, tons in common, two mm -hmm. amazing people. And my dear buddy, Dr. Jeff Kendall, man, we've been best friends since we were teenagers, played football together. So, Dr. Jeff, he's at University of Minnesota. He is a psychologist, and he's uh, – thank you for joining us. The pandemic has severely impacted literacy rates for students. This yeah. will manifest the work for many years to come, and you are so right there, Dr. Jeff. And one more shout-out. Janny's in the house. Janny, good morning from Michigan. Happy Monday to you, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Wow. Connect with Rebecca. So Rebecca, let's go there. Uh, let's continue this. Okay. So let's say like, again, we're talking about manufacturers. 75% of all manufacturers are 20 employees and less. So a lot of the manufacturers, you know, so maybe like the John Deere's a publicly traded or, you know, you have four or 500 employees. You have the bandwidth, you have the uh, resources to offer some uh, services. Say a small manufacturer who just really cares deeply about their employees here, you know, and, and, you know, and let's go there for a second and, and please correct me if, if, you know, I put myself in that, in those shoes of that entrepreneur, I care deeply about my employees. How do you, how, you know, without insulting anybody, how do you approach an employee to say, Hey, uh, you know, how do you pull them aside and say, Hey, there are some opportunities. If you want to advance your education, how do you uh, come from a place of like this is a great uh, question. authenticity, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Genuine and like inspire that person say like education is power education is going to advance you it's going to take you to a higher level how do you do how do you approach that employee at the smaller companies the 10 maybe you only have 10 employees how do you approach those folks 
That's a fantastic question. One of our partners, Drew Robinson, may be here in the chat and he can shed some more light on this. Um, but one of the things that we've been finding can be really helpful is to not push this as you need improvement, but rather to make it a benefit through HR. So it, that's a very strong way to give students something that they want. Very often these low and mid-skilled employees identify further education as one of the top benefits they'd like to receive from a job. So it can be as simple as offering a learning app through your HR department as a benefit and maybe giving out a prize occasionally for the person who's completed the most work or moved up the most. Employees get really excited and invested in that. And it's a way of seeing, seeing them in a positive way instead of as a deficit way, as Damon mentioned. That's perfect. Man, I got this, this guy's got to be watching my, my manufacturing money motivation. He shouldn't be out there weed whacking. But anyway, so let's. <laughs> all right. So the benefits to the employer, again, you know, I'm thinking about those small employers out there. And again, I'm being a little bit of Captain Obvious, Rebecca, but just think, you know, like, you know, and let's put ourselves in the shoes of that entrepreneur. You know, boy, they are busy all day. One minute they're, you know, dealing with operations. Next minute they're dealing with HR. Hey, I need to do marketing for five minutes. I have this fire to put out, that fire to put out. But if they could step back and take a breath and just really think about, boy, the, the competitive advantage that an entrepreneur, a man, woman, and, and again, in our space that we're talking in manufacturing, by elevating our, our folks and resources, let's talk about what's in it for them. What's in it for the entrepreneur, the business owner on, you know, taking the time and energy to help educate those folks or to get them into the right programs? Absolutely. So we've talked about workforce development, and of course, that's important for entrepreneurs. We need people that we can rely on in our small businesses, right? It takes a lot of time, energy, and money to be out hiring all the time. One of the things we know, National Skills Coalition has some great research showing that these lower to mid-skilled employees are incredibly loyal. Their retention rate is high. Yeah. So to to offer them something that gives them a path to like succession planning in your business. Yeah. You can take somebody who knows who knows your landscaping and scale them all the way up through your business with this. Mm -hmm. It's a lot cheaper than hiring and you make a friend for life that way. Um, another thing is economic development. So we want our businesses to be in thriving communities, right? We need the people around us to be able to afford our services and to know about them. The Barbara Bush Foundation has some research that will rock your world. If we could bring every U.S. American up to an equivalent of a sixth grade reading level, that would add $2 trillion annually to the U.S. economy. I mean, just think about that. Think about that purchasing power for just a minute. Yeah. And of course, you know, on another prong is the health literacy. The CDC tells us that, that the five primary chronic illnesses in the U.S. cost employers $36 billion each year just due to absenteeism and higher health insurance premiums. So even being able to raise a person's health literacy, you know, these adults often have multiple people in their household that they're making decisions for. They need to know what's on a food label. Is it worth the risk to smoke? A really common problem is what's the difference between primary care, urgent care, and ER? And particularly underinsured adults tend to go directly to the ER because they wait until the problem is very severe before they seek care uh, due to the cost. So all of these things, when and where to eat, how to read a medicine label, have a direct impact on employers. Yeah, yeah. man. I tell you, this, this, so this is yeah. good. And yeah. when you and let's, I want to, I want to give a shout out to entrepreneurs for a second. And I think what I absolutely love with your mission and what you do, and I think this guy might be coming back. He was like right outside my door, but anyway, what I love when you think about entrepreneurs, you know, uh, you know, I was, I was just reading, I'm reading Dory Clark's book again for the second time, uh, Rebecca, I'm reading, I just read the long game for the second time. I'm reading entrepreneurial you, and she was one of, uh, 
two phenomenal books, Damon. That oh man, they are yeah. so we gotta have Dory back. But an entrepreneurial, you she was interviewing a gentleman that had 15 employees, and he was talking about how like he feels responsible for those yeah. 15 people, and like he, you know, and, and and just it was just so inspiring just hearing how he's talking about it. But I love what you're talking about, Rebecca. And like, you know, you treat, you know, many entrepreneurs treat their business like a cause mission in that what how you can elevate in this a list of benefits that you've routed off on how the, the pride that an employee can take on how you're elevating them yeah. in the badge of honor by ed, by and showing that you care, that retention is like you just impact so much right there. I want to slide in. Damon, did you have did you have a comment? Yeah, and I just I just think about, you know. Entrepreneurs, small business owners are usually really involved in their community. And this is something that they may be overlooking because like you said, Rebecca, if I can help my employee that walks through the door that might be doing whatever to, to maybe upskill, educate themselves to be better at what they're doing there and then move up all the way through the company. How does that affect my community? How does that affect their family? How does that, because entrepreneurs want to make a difference, right? Right. Just think of the difference you can make when you when you help an employee become better and better and better and they move up through your organization with the difference in the lives of the others and the, and them and the people around them. I just think it's it's Absolutely. really Absolutely. Cool. And this goes back, I think, to what Kurt's pal Jeffrey is it was saying yeah. earlier. We've had a lot of literacy loss in the country in the last two years. And we know from research that the number one predictor absolutely number one over everything in a child's academic success is the literacy rate of the primary caregiver, usually the mother. So if you think, for example, about my dad, I have a 12-year-old brother. My dad's back in Appalachia with my 12-year-old brother living in a place where only dial-up is available. He isn't particularly digitally literate himself. I know he has a 12-year-old to homeschool for two years. That has a tremendous impact on what the workforce is going to look like for years from now. And there are a lot of people in that position. So helping the parents also helps the next generation. Yeah. Man, I absolutely love this. And, and Damon, yeah. just comes there, uh, we had a guest a couple weeks ago. And, and Rebecca, you might have been on. We had, uh, Damon, I think you were off that day. I had Simone and Paula from IMAC, the Illinois yep. MEP. And Paula shared a story. Her folks came straight from Puerto Rico. She's first generation. And on Saturday mornings at 17 years old, her and her mother, uh, Paula and her mother, would go stand in line at a manufacturer. And whoever got first in line would be picked to work that day to get on the line. And she shared such a powerful story on how what manufacturing did for her, for her family, for her career, and how she went off to become first educated in her family and how important these jobs are. So, you know, so for folks out there, and I like what you were saying earlier, Rebecca, you know, like we've hammered, you know, like, boy, four-year degree, advanced degrees, PhDs, amazing. We need them. We've got a couple of PhDs here today. Damon, your mother has a PhD. But folks that, you know, uh, pursuing that education isn't for everyone. And there's a tremendous amount of opportunities in manufacturing that we talk about here on a weekly basis, you know, for folks to elevate themselves. Rebecca, I'm going to slide here for a second. You are huge on bridging communities, bringing together folks, building that culture, taking, uh, you talked about like uh, folks that were English is not their first language and really kind of uh, raising the bar for folks. Can you talk about your, what's your, in, the, in your experience where you found success on bridging and building communities in the education world? Absolutely. One of the interesting things is that many of us had tended to work in silos and just the structure of funding in the US now is, is working to change that. But I think the conversations like you guys are having between employers and the community that wants to prepare people for employment are super important. As Ellen mentioned, we don't need everybody in the world to have a bachelor's degree, but we really messed up around my generation and told everybody, go get a bachelor's degree. Uh, so we, we have some PR work to do about all the great opportunities mm -hmm. that are out there. Even if you eventually want a 
a bachelor's degree. I mean, you can get certified in welding, make a fantastic income. My mom worked on the line in a manufacturing plant. She was the person who kept our family together, gave, got us all health insurance and braces and those really important life things. So I think we just have to get the conversation out further about what is available. I've learned so much from my students just by listening to what they want. I have some students who are super passionate about getting CNC machining jobs. Yeah. And they talk to me about how great it's going to be when they get the job. I have a guy in my class who drives a forklift and he talks about the next thing he wants to move up to. And he's taking some computer classes in addition to his English because he wants to move up. He likes the organization he's with. So cool. So these, these conversations that have voices from a lot of different places are so valuable. Yeah. Well, first off, I want to thank your mother for that radiant, amazing, beautiful smile that you share. You just have a contagious enthusiasm. So manufacturing brought those pearly whites. Let's, let's see that big smile there. Let's, let's thank mom for that beautiful <laughs> smile. So I love what you just said and how, you know, what manufacturing can do for, you know, these manufacturing jobs, you know, they build communities. These manufacturing jobs, they build, you know, these are families that can now take a family vacation. These are families that can go off on a picnic. They celebrate holidays. You know, these are the opportunities that, that you know, by pursuing this education and what manufacturing can do for families. This is just wonderful. Rebecca, I know I, you're, I know you're super busy. We'll start winding down here in a minute or two. A couple more questions for you. What where do you see things going from here? Okay, 2022, we're in the fourth quarter. What do you what are you super excited about on the education adult education front coming into fourth quarter and into 2023 from your perspective? Hopefully, as we're kind of getting out of this little pandemic thing that we've been playing around with. I'm very excited about new legislation that's trying to build digital literacy and access. So we have a federal legislation that will help build an infrastructure for internet to reach more people than it does now, to help people get devices, to help them learn how to use those devices effectively just to give us that foundational infrastructure. I can't even make a doctor's appointment now without using an app. I can't get a refill of my prescription at the pharmacy. So this really has become an essential everyday need. And I'm excited that there's a plan to tackle that. I'm also excited about the continued intertwining of what employers need and what adult education can provide. I think the conversation is really exciting and promising. M most of the people who come to us come because they're looking to to improve their lives through work in some way. So it's really important to have that conversation at a lot of different levels. Perfect. Now, I know you've been starting to travel. Do you have travel plans coming up or any, any events or anything that you want to share with folks that should be on their radar in any capacity or things that are going on with your organizations that, that folks, I, I believe I dropped that link in the chat that you, that you mm -hmm. shared. Yep. Anything that we should have on uh, folks' radars as we're coming into this quarter? Absolutely. Coalition for Adult Basic Education does uh, monthly webinars, mm -hmm. usually three to four a month, which you can find through their website. They bring a lot of really interesting perspectives together. Uh, I am affiliated also with ProLiteracy. ProLiteracy provides research and a journal on adult basic ed. So if you're looking for some facts about what what adult literacy is like in your area. We have some great resources for that. And I would also say, you know, we have a lot of conferences coming up. I'm heading out Damon's Way in two weeks for the Washington English for Speakers of Other Languages conference. I'm heading to Virginia on Wednesday for the Southeast Regions English Language Conference, but they're, they're all over the place. We have our state conference in Arkansas at the end of the month. Louisiana is at the 1st of November. I'm going to be in all those places, so come and say hi to me, guys. Man, you're, you're a heavy, heavy road show coming up for Rebecca. Yep. So, guys, as we wind down, I dropped uh, I dropped Coab. I, David, I, I think in the past I didn't know I could drop comments. I think I don't know if this is new for StreamYard. So I just I dropped Coab into the chat box. I dropped that map in there. So, yep. guys, you want to connect with Rebecca? Please connect with her here. And uh, Dr. Ellen just dropped a, a pro literacy. Literacy. Yeah. Thank you for dropping that in there. 
Rebecca, we shared Grandma Lillian was your hero. Mom did an amazing job working in manufacturing, uh, providing for you, your family, creating that stability. You just shared such an abundance of, boy, thank you for the superpowers that you are exhausting and sharing and just educating our country. My last question for you today, it's based around inspiration. Who or what inspires you today? You are just a fierce advocate for adult uh, literacy and education. You're traveling all over the country, just fighting the good fight. Who or what inspires you today to keep this drive? Oh, that's a good one. So I'm going to I'm gonna shamelessly plug Ellen's social media here, guys. Follow Ellen Beatty. She is very inspirational to me. I'll also say that the students are a huge factor. Sometimes when people think about teaching in adult ed, they don't realize how, how fun it really is. When these students come to class, they're there because they want to be there. They pay attention. They work hard. They network with one another and build a community within the classroom. And and sometimes I'll teach a class from six to 10 at night and the students are always worried about me. Oh, teacher, are you tired? Don't be tired. Thank you for coming to class. But that student has gotten up at three o'clock in the morning and gone to work and they're worried about me. So it is just, it's the most amazing community to be a part of. I, I get a lot more that I give, honestly. That's well, awesome. I'll tell you, that's awesome. Dr. Ellen gives a big shout out and a thank you for the important work that you're doing. So, all right, we, we will wind down. So, Rebecca, uh, we mentioned uh, how to connect with you here on LinkedIn, your socials, uh, drop your websites, any other things that you want to, any last uh, words of wisdom, parting thoughts that you want to share with everybody, how to connect with you, your organizations, anything you want to do there. Yeah, reach out if you'd like to chat. I'd love to have a conversation. My email is rler, E-L-L-E-R, -L -L -E at proliteracy.org. So you're also welcome to reach out by email if that's better. Perfect. So, all right. Hey, how about on this Monday morning? Thank you for being flexible with time. We usually go off at yeah. 1230 Eastern time, yes. and you guys made adjustments for me, so I appreciate you guys. How about everybody, if you've been sitting, let's give a little stand. Let's stand and rise. Let's give a little round of applause for our wonderful, amazing, incredible guests for what she's doing, helping make our country as competitive as possible. What a great, boy, don't you just feel great about what you do every day, Rebecca? Do you ever feel like you're working? You probably don't even feel like you're working. You know what? Those 2 a.m. flights home are rough, but everything else is pretty great. And you guys are a really fun way to start a Monday morning. Well, hey, awesome. I just want to give my thanks to you, your friendship. Yeah. I love, you know, if anybody had popped in uh, uh, late, Rebecca and I are part of a little mastermind group together. And I just, I, I, I worship you. I adore you. I respect you. I admire the work that you're doing. It is just such great work. Keep it up. Keep that foot on the pedal. We need you. Damon, any words of wisdom that you want to part everybody on, on this Manufacturing Monday Motivation? Not today. Uh, this was great to be able to talk to Rebecca. And it's really, I, I think there's so much that, that manufacturers can do to help help their people, their community by focusing a, a more on education and uh, just just start to reach out. Reach out to Rebecca and, 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 and others in your community to, to see what you can do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, hey. and Kurt, the love is mutual. No, it's thank you, man. It is. I'm so blessed to be part of uh, the group that we're in. And hey, one more, Trisha, man, Trisha, you're just amazing. I, I, uh, Trish, Rebecca, please do me a favor. You guys need to connect. There, you yep. have a lot of uh, collaboration connect. opportunities here. Here comes my weed whacker guy again. So we'll we'll wind down on this. So guys, at October 10th, it's Columbus Day. So go out, enjoy, celebrate this wonderful, beautiful fall day. Damon, we got baseball this week. So everybody yep. out there, if, if you're not a baseball fan, just go out and root for the Mariners just for Damon's sake. So there's big baseball playoffs this week. So, guys, hopefully we love bringing – thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time to spend with us. We It is such an honor and privilege. We bring amazing, incredible people here like Rebecca who just motivate, inspire, and just yeah. do great work for um, – for, Man, so many people that you're impacting, so many lives that you're impacting, Rebecca. So hats off to you. We wish everybody a great, amazing week. And our parting thoughts, 
be someone's inspiration today. Just be someone's inspiration and man, just make everybody's world a little bit better. So, hey, we'll see you. You got, uh, as a matter of fact, fellow Ruxer, you got Rosemary on Faces of Business tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. six o'clock Eastern, three o'clock Pacific. We have Paul Van Meter on Friday from Pro Shop this Friday. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, Dana, be- another Bellingham guy. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And uh, I might, really be, I might be, I'm down in, I'm hitting a manufacturer in Texas. I might go live this week down here in Texas. So nice. you guys have a fantastic week and uh, we'll see you soon. Rebecca, hang out one second. We're going to close it out. God see bless you, everyone. everybody. Thank you.